Good afternoon, class. Today I'm going to discuss Chapter 3, uh, Consolidations Occurring Between the Parent and Subsidiary Companies Subsequent to the Date of Acquisition. I will also identify and describe the various methods available to the parent company to internally account for its subsidiary investments. So Learning Objective 3-1 recognize the complexities in preparing the consolidated financial reports that emerge from the passage of time. The passage of time creates complexities for internal record keeping and the balance of the investment account varies due to the accounting method used. A worksheet and consolidation entries are used to eliminate the investment account and record the subsidiary's assets and liabilities to create a single set of financial statements for the combined business entity. A worksheet combines separately recorded revenues and expenses of parent and subsidiaries. Separate record keeping system results in subsidiaries expense based on original book values, not acquisition date values that the parent must recognize. Adjustments are made to reflect amortization of excess consideration transfer from parent over the subsidiary's book value. And effects of intra entity transactions are removed. All this is done. Um, to ensure the con consolidated net income is determined correctly. So investment accounting for the parent. For internal record keeping, parent uses an accounting method to monitor two companies' relationship. Parent's investment account balance and amount of income recognized vary over time depending on the method used. On the worksheet, parent's investment account is eliminated so subsidiary actual assets and liabilities can be cons consolidated. And income accrued by the parent is removed and subsidiaries revenue and expenses are in, in, included to create an income statement for the combined business entity. So learning objective 3-2, identify and describe the various methods available to a parent company in order to maintain its investment in a subsidiary account in its internal records. So record keeping, if parent can exert control over the subsidiary, the external financial reporting consolidation is required. And so internal record keeping, a parent selects an investment account method to monitor activities of the subsidiary. And the three uh, most prominent methods used to account for the investments are the equity method, initial value method, and the partial equity method. So again, for external financial reporting, um, if the parent exerts control over a subsidiary 50% or more, um, they're going to consolidate the financial statements. But internally, they can choose between... Um, different methods to account for the internal record keeping and three of the most prominent ones are the equity method um initial value method and partial equity method and we went over the equity equity method in chapter one and two so the equity method so the advantage of each investment accounting method so the equity me method is a full accrual accounting it creates a total income figure reflective of the entire combined business entity initial value or cost method uh, the cash basis accounting is easily to apply and gives a good measurement of cash flows generated by the investment. And the partial equity method is a accrual accounting without equity adjustments. Usually gives balances approximating consolidation figures, but easier to apply than the equity method. So here's a summary of the three internal accounting techniques, the method, the investment account, the income account, and the advantages. And so here you have the equity, the initial value, and the partial equity. And under, um, so going across with the method, method of equity, you have uh, continually adjusted to reflect the current owner's equity of acquired company. The income accrued as earned, amortization, and other adjustments are recognized. And acquiring company total gives a true representation of consolidation of figures. Initial value remains at the acquis acquisition date value assigned. Dividends declared, recorded as dividend income. It is easier to apply. It often reflects cash flows from the subsidiary. And partial equity, adjust only, adjusted only for accrual income. And dividends declared by the acquired company. Income acquired, income accrued as earned. No other adjustments are recognized. It usually gives balance approximating cons consolidation figures, but it is easier to apply than the equity method. So method adopted. It affects only separate financial records, has no impact on the subsidiary's balances, does not affect amounts reported on consolidated financial statements to external users. It's only for internal purposes. 
Learning Objective 3-3A, prepare consolidated financial statements subsequent to the acquisition when the parent has applied the equity method in its internal records. So here we're using the equity method for internal records. So subsequent consolidation equity method example. So parent company obtains all the outstanding common stock of Sun Company on January 1st, 2017. Parent acquires this stock for $800,000 in cash. Sun Company's balances are shown, shown below. And we've seen a schedule similar to this for in chapter one and two. Here you had the book value and the fair value and then the difference. And so again, the fair value is an adjustment at the date that they acquired the company, uh, whether they need to mark up or mark down certain assets or liabilities. And so here, the book value, net book value is total of 600,000. The fair value is recognized as 720,000. And so there's a $120,000 difference. You further go over to this next schedule, equity method example, allocation of subsidiary fair value. And so 100% 100% acquisition of Sun Company, allocation of the acquisition date subsidiary fair value as of January 1st, 2017. So Sun Company's fair value, the consideration transferred by parent company was 800000 So here you have the book value of Sun Company. You have common stock, additional paid in capital, and its retained earnings totaling 600,000 that gives you an excess fair value over book value of 200,000 to accommodate for some of the 200,000 you have an allocation for specific accounts based on fair values trademarks patent technology and then equipment was adjusted down they saying it was overvalued that's an additional 120,000 so that leaves you with $80,000 in excess of fair value not identified with, with specific accounts which means it goes to goodwill so they paid eight hundred thousand for a company that was valued at seven hundred and twenty, and so from the eighty thousand is a difference from the seven hundred twenty, and it's a, it's going to be attributed to goodwill. This was as of the acquisition date. So the equity method example for amortization. So here are the items that were identified as the additional hundred and twenty thousand. This is the the schedule, like in chapter one and two, when you had to do a schedule to show the amortization. So excess amortization schedule, you have the allocation of $20,130 to $30,000 over evaluation and goodwill and the remaining useful life and then your annual excess amortization, which ends up totaling $7,000. And so amortization includes amortization of uh, definite lived intangibles and depreciation of intangible assets, the acquisition date, fair value of Sun's equipment is $30,000 less than its book value. A fair value reduction and an expense reduction so here the equity method example so subsequent consolidation so now we have the activity that happened that has happened after the acquisition date so assume Sun company earns income of a hundred thousand in 2017 and declares a forty thousand dollar cash dividend August 1st and pays a dividend at August 8th so the first entry here it's going to adjust the investment account for $800,000 that we originally paid. It's going to zero out the investment. You're going to recognize the $40,000 dividend receivable to record a cash dividend declaration from subsidiary cash. From subsidiary. Then you're going to recognize the actual cash from the, from the dividend on 8-8 to record receipt of the subsidiary cash dividend. Now we have the investment in Sun Company in equity and subsidiary earnings. So now you're recording the actual $100,000 in income. And you're going to have an adjustment for your amortization, equity and uh, subsidiary earnings, and a debit to investment in Sun Company to recognize the amortization on allocations made in acquisition of subsidiary. Back to exhibit 3.3 that we already covered, the $7,000. So again, these are the entries under the equity method. So subsequent consolidation worksheet entries. So now following these actual entries, you're going to have some entries that are um, just done in the worksheet and not actually journal entries in the system. So five entries consolidate the companies. 
Um, the worksheet entries develop total totals reported by the entity, but are not a, but are not physically recorded in the account balances of either company. The entries are, and they have uh, they, they design letters to represent these entries to help them easier to remember. So you have S A I D E, and so S stands for stockholders. So you're going to eliminate it eliminates the subsidiary stockholders equity account, beginning balances, and the book value component within the parent's investment account. A recognizes the, the unamortized allocations as of the beginning of the current year associated with the adjustments to fair value. And I eliminates the subsidiary's income accrued by the parent. D eliminates the subsidiary's dividends. And E recognizes the excess amortization expense for the current period on allocations from original adjustments to fair value. So S. So here we have subsequent consolidation entry S. So this is S. You're going to take the common stock, the additional paid in capital, retained and retained earnings are all going to be debited, and you're going to credit investment in Sun Company. So entry S removes the investment in Sun Company account and adds each asset and liability book value to the consolidated figures. Sun stockholders equity account as of the beginning of the year. The label S always refers to the removal of a subsidiary's beginning stockholder's equity balance. And so, so S is basically an adjustment to the owner's equity section. So A, consolidation entry A, you have your, your trademarks, your patent technology, and your goodwill are going to be debited, and you're going to credit equipment and investment in some company. Entry A adjusts subsidiary balances from their book values to the acquisition date fair values, and includes goodwill created by the acquisition. It represents the allocation made in connection with the excess of the subsidiary's fair value over its book value. So here you're 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 making the adjustments to move these accounts from their book value to the fair value. Consolidation entry I. So equity and and subsidiary earnings is debited for ninety three thousand, and the investment in some company is credited for ninety three thousand. Entry I removes Sun Company's recognize, income recognized by parent during the year. So Sun's revenue and expense accounts can be brought into the consolidation totals. So originally um, it was $100,000 in net income, and then you had $7,000 for amortization, and that's how you come to the $93,000. So they, con they consolidated those two entries, reversing them out from the, from the original acquisition, acquisition entries. So consolidation entry D. Investment in some company is $40,000 and the dividends declared were $40,000. Entry D removes the intra entity transfer of cash from the dividends distributed to the parent from Sun Company. So basically, it's increasing the investment account because originally you decreased it when you recognized the issue of the dividends. Consolidation entry E amortization expenses debited and equipment is debited. Patent technology and depreciation expenses credited. Entry E recognizes the current year excess amortization expenses relating to the adjustments of Sun's assets to acquisition date fair values. It adjusts depreciation expense from the tangible asset equipment and adjusts amortization expense for the intangible asset patent technology. So E follows entry I by removing excess allocations of depreciation and amortization. So here, this uh, consolidation worksheet for the equity method applied um, should make it a little bit more clear here. So if, you, so if you're following over here, if you follow the letters for what the entries are doing, you can see that S eliminates the stockholders equity. So, you, so you're taking a parent company and son company. Then you have these entries, which are done in the worksheet that are going to bring you to a consolidated total for, for the companies. And so there's items that you need to remove in order to come to a consolidated total. And those and those were the acronyms, the S-A-I-D-E. And so you need to eliminate the stockholders equity, which, which are the entries here for S, if you follow the entries on what S, S is going to take out, we just went over. Um, A, the allocation of fair value amount over the book value. You're going to bring everything up to the fair value amount from the original book value amount. I, elimination of parents' equity and subsidiary earnings. D, Elimination of intra-entity intra dividends, and E, the recognition of current year excess amortization over depreciation.
consolidation subsequent to the year of acquisition equity method. So assume on January 1st, 2020, some companies retained earnings balance has risen to 600,000. The account had a reported total of only 380,000 on January 1st, 2017. Sun's book value apparently has increased by 220,000 during the year of 2017 to 2019 period. So here you have another example. Um, the analyze the procedure of changes due to the passage of time. The parent company continues to hold its ownership of Sun Company as of December 31st, 2020. Sun has a $40,000 liability to payable to parent. On January 1st, 2020, Sun's retained earning balance is 600000 Sun's book value has increased by 220000 Parent reports an equity and subsidiary earnings balance of 153000 which is the net income of 160000 minus the 7000 in dividends. The balance in the investment of Sun's company account has been adjusted um, for the following. The annual accrual of Sun's income, 160000 The receipt of $40,000 in dividends from Sun and the recognition of an annual excess amortization expense of 7000 So again, in this current example, they just run through another example for you to show you how you go from the parent um, to the subsidiary, consolidated entries, and then you come up with a consolidated total. What's, what's significant about this example is they introduced the letter P, which represents a payable. And so subsequent consolidation entry P. So in addition to entries S, A, I, D, and E, entry P must be prepared. Entry P eliminates the intra-entity payable. Intra-entity uh, reciprocal accounts do not relate to outside parties. So Sun's $40,000 payable and Parrot's $40,000 receivable must be removed because the companies are being reported as a single entity. All worksheet entries relate, related specifically to either previous year's S and A or the current year IDE and P. So learning objective 3-3B, prepare consolidated financial statements subsequent to the acquisition when the parent has applied the initial value method in its internal records. So the first two examples, we were going over the equity method. Everything's based on the equity method. And remember we had three, type, three methods that were prominently used. And so the, the next method we're going to cover is, is the initial value method. And so under the initial value method, so subsequent consolidations, investment recorded using the initial value or partial equity method. The parent company uses the initial value method or the partial equity method for internal record keeping. Application of either alternative changes the balances recorded by the parent over time and the consolidation process. Neither of these approaches affect any of the final consolidation balances reported. And so just three parent accounts vary because of the method applied. And so the investment account, the income recognized from the subsidiary, and the parents retained earning, the periods uh, after year of combination. So only differences found in these balances affect the consolidation process when another method is applied. Accounting for these three balances any time after the acquisition date is of special importance. So two entries for the initial value method are different from those of the equity method. So entry, so here again you have entry S, A, I, D, and E. And so entry S is the same as the equity method. Entry A is going to be the same as the equity method. Entry I is different using the initial value method. So it determines the now it determines the parent's dividend income account and subs dividends uh, declared account. Entry D is not needed anymore, and entry E is the same as the equity method. Applying the initial value method. So when the initial value method is used by the parent, the income and investment accounts on the parent's company's separate statements vary. Significant difference between the initial value method and the equity method. And so parent's separate statements do not reflect the consolidation, consolidated income totals when the initial value method is used. Because equity adjustments are not recorded, Neither parents report net income nor retained earnings provided an accurate portrayal of consolidated figures. On the objective 3-3C, prepare consolidated financial statements subsequent to the acquisition when the parent has applied the partial equity method in its internal records. So now this is the third method, the partial, partial equity method. 
So the same two entries are different for the partial equity method. So, so in saying here, we again, we have S-A-I-D-E. And so entry S is the same as the equity method. Entry A is the same as the equity method. Entry I is different using the partial equity method. It eliminates the parent's equity in the subsidiary's income and reduces the investment account. Entry D eliminates the dividends declared account. And entry E is the same as the equity method. So consolidation entries, comparison of methods. And so remember that, remember it says here to remember entries S, A, E are the same for all three methods. The parent's record keeping is limited to two periodic journal entries, which is which are the annual accrual of subsidiary income and receipts of dividends. The investments and income account balances differ for the other methods, and so will the worksheet entries I and D. Learning objective 3-4. Understand that a parent's internal accounting method for its subsidiary investments has no effect on resulting consolidated financial statements. It's purely internal. Consolidate, consolidation is subsequent to the year of acquisition, initial value, and partial equity methods. So consolidated financial statements require a full accrual-based measurement of both income and retained earnings. Neither the initial value nor the partial equity method provides a full accrual-based measure. The initial value method uses the cash basis for income recognition of dividends, and a partial equity method only partially accrues subsidiary income. So a new worksheet adjustments are needed to convert the parent's beginning of the year retained earning balance to a full accrual basis. Consolidation is subsequent to a year of acquisition, so entry C. Beginning retained earning account must be increased or decreased to create the same effect as the equity method. So this is under the two other methods that you have to do this additional work. So entry C, the C refers to the conversion being made to the equity method, full accrual totals. The asterisk indicates that this entry relates solely to transactions of prior periods. Entry C, the adjustment of the parent's beginning retained earnings should be recorded before other worksheet entries to align the beginning balances for the year. After the initial year of acquisition and entry C, it's required that the parent has not applied the equity method. So if you've used the other two methods, you will need to do entry C. Other consolidation entries. So in addition to the entries S, A, I, D, E, and C, intercompany debt, which are payables or receivables, must be eliminated with entry P. And we, we did do example entry P. So if a subsidiary uh, long-term debt exceeds its fair value, a consolidation entry is required to decrease the long-term debt reported in the consolidated balance sheet. In periods subsequent to the acquisition, worksheet entries are needed to increase the interest expense to be recognized in the consolidated balance sheet. So here we have consolidated totals subsequent to the acquisition. So consolidated totals subsequent to acquisition exhibit 3.14. You have current revenues, current expenses, investment, retained earnings, assets and liabilities, goodwill investment, and capital stock, additional paid in capital. Consolidated worksheet entries. Um, this worksheet here, we have the equity method, initial value method applied, and the partial equity method applied. And it basically explains what happens with each one of these um, entries that have been labeled S, A, I, D, E. Then you have P and also an entry C. And then you have the any time during the year of acquisition and any time following the year of acquisition. And it's pretty much just a summary of what, what we've already discussed. It's a real good checks and balance worksheet. And that's the end of chapter three. Um, please read the chapter. And I know a lot of this, a lot of these uh, methods are very in depth, and we're kind of just touching on them in this PowerPoint. But if you go through the chapter, read, and you work out some of these uh, problems, it will make a lot more sense to you. Thank you.